Welcome to Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast. I am your host, Dave West, codename Phantom Troublemaker. And I am your co-host, Noel Wood, codename Crapshoot. And I am your Cobra intern that can be both naughty and nice, codename Legion Cub. <laughs> and we've seen plenty of both here on the show. <laughs> uh, and in person. Everybody uh, check us out at Dragon Con for more of that. <laughs> Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Audible Interlude Podcast and on X at G.I. Joe Audible. And wherever you follow us, leave us a review. Uh, if you are listening to the audio version of this episode right now, uh, follow us wherever that is. Spotify, uh, where, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, and then leave a five-star review and let us know you did it. If you leave, look, you haven't got a, it doesn't have to be Shakespeare. Leave a funny review. Uh, Hillbilly Harper has left the greatest reviews of all time for us. Uh, you're going to have a hard time topping him, but if you can, we'll read it here on the air. Uh, and you also, please check out audiblearmy.com. Uh, for $1.99 a month, uh, it is, of course, a Patreon, because that's what we all do now to try and desperately pay all of the fees that it costs to bring you this free entertainment you get my show notes before each episode is released early and ad free access to all audio episodes as in as soon as we are done with this stream tonight i will download the audio from it and put it up at audiblearmy.com so if you're not available for the live stream or you prefer listening to just the audio you'll have access to that almost immediately uh, or have... even if you just realize it's that good and you want to hear it again. Yeah. Like or, or if you, if you watch, it. it's, it's like uh, if you go to a WWE event and you're there and you see the whole thing live and in person, but then you're like, you know, I really want to hear the commentary also. And you go home and you watch it, watch the televised version. Mm -hmm. It's exactly like that. Uh, you get exclusive video access to recordings of audio episodes. So every other week, uh, we will do audio segment-based episodes where we do reviews, we do retrospective things, uh, and typically those were meant for audio, but now we're doing video of those as well, and it's available at audiblearmy.com. You get early access to all G.I. Joe and G.I. Joe adjacent reviews on the Needless Things YouTube channel, which is where you're watching us right now. You get the opportunity to vote on content for the show, and you get early access to Audible Interlude merch, like this hat that I'm wearing right now, or our itty-bitty-ditty bags. Uh, so, check out audiblearmy.com. It is the way to uh, interact more directly with what I think is the most entertaining G.I. Joe show on the planet. Uh, this is our hat version 2.0, which is this one right here. Uh, we will have these at all live events, so check us out at Joe Fest and at Dragon Con. We'll have uh, 2.0 hats with us. And then we have a wide variety of shirts available. Check out the pinned stories at Audible Interlude Podcast on Instagram uh, for a link to our Tee Public store, which I think right now has a sale going on. But seriously, like every week they have a sale going on. Wait buy the stuff on sale because we're we're not super concerned about making money off the shirts we just want people wearing the shirts and if we run into you at a convention at joe fest at dragon con and you're wearing one of the shirts you will get a free itty bitty ditty bag not too shabby huh mm. like i like giving away stuff yeah all you gotta do is wear a shirt that right now is 35 percent off site wide yeah hopefully you're gonna be wearing a shirt anyway so why not make it an Audible Interlude shirt? I mean, if you want to get an Audible Interlude tattoo across your chest. Sure, sure. It's, it, that free, works too. Free ditty yeah. bag. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we might give you two free ditty bags. You got to give one for each ditty. <laughs> 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 Moving on. We don't talk about uh, ditty anymore. We are here. Yeah, we've, we've, we've pushed the, the limits of <laughs> the family limit entertainment. Of taste. <laughs> over the, the past several months here. Uh, you are watching us on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Uh, tons and tons of G.I. Joe reviews uh, have gone up over the past couple of weeks. And tomorrow, the final review of Super 7 Ultimates Wave 4, Zartan, goes up. I'm very pleased with the Zartan thumbnail. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of thumbnails and just like 
having to do thumbnails for YouTube, but I'm very happy with the Zartan thumbnail. So everybody keep an eye out for that tomorrow. It's going to be great. Schedule wise, our next live stream is going to be April the 29th. So put it on your calendar now. And of course, next week we'll have one of those audio segment episodes. We're going to review Cobra Commander number four. Have you guys read it yet? Mm hmm. Oh, I read it first time oh, today. Yeah. Uh, Rachel Salinas is asking Are Quick Kick cosplayers excluded? No, because the Audible interlude throwing star sash. Will be available soon. Oh, no. You keep making promises. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I can't even get a tactical shovel made. <laughs> Sash is is outside of my means. Uh, and then we will be hosting the kickoff panel at Joe Fest 2024 Saturday morning. Uh, so come out and say hello again. If you're wearing a shirt, you get the free itty bitty ditty bag. Not uh, the quick kickoff show. Yeah, the or or the quick kickoff show. That's what show I, think up. That's what, I think that's what we should call it now. <laughs> show up in your quick kick cosplay at the kickoff show, and you'll get a free itty bitty ditty bag. Uh, check out JoeFestUSA.com for more information about that. And uh, I think, do, do we feel like it is it is it time? Is it time to move on to some news? That's what the people are here for. That is, well, uh, that's not well, they're, us, what they're here then, for. The, oh no, the people are here for our special guests tonight, which we'll get to <laughs> very, very soon now. Grindhouse <laughs> Toys is going to be joining us tonight, and uh, we're going to go about eight hours, because that's how many questions I've got for <laughs> yeah, We're not doing eight hours, because i got to be up in the morning, and I'm sure everybody else has business too. Uh, so let's get into some news. We were going to start with a little talk about Mercari and the way that they have adjusted their fees uh, the buyer pays the fees now, and it's really wrecking prices on the site. Uh, a post that I saw about it was that a fella had bought something for $99, and then once the fees and the shipping were added, it ended up being $134. E. And that's nuts. Uh, but I don't want to waste too much time on that because we've got better stuff to get to. Just be aware. I really just wanted to mention it so nobody gets taken by surprise because I, we... I'm a big fan of Mercari. I bought a bunch of stuff on there and I don't want anybody to like think they're getting ready to get a great deal and then find out they've got 15% of fees they've got to pay. So just be aware of that. When you get on Mercari, know that things have changed. We, we might get a little more in depth with that uh, in a couple of weeks, but for right now, I just wanted to kind of throw up a warning flare for everybody. Uh, next up, some big news that isn't totally news, but is a little news, because I guess Paramount has super double confirmed <laughs> that we are going to get the G.I. Joe Transformers crossover movie that everybody's waiting for. Uh, but didn't like, I read it's going to be on Paramount Plus? Yeah, it's, I, I mean, it's, it, it is supposed to be headed for for theaters uh but i mean lorenzo de bonaventura had basically wait is that the right lorenzo it's not lorenzo it's lamas. Not lamas no <laughs> okay all right although it could you the movie could probably use lorenzo lamas i wouldn't mind that at all uh anyway it's it's as happening as movies get at this point but as i reminded my son when he told me about this a masters of the universe movie has also been happening about a dozen times in the past 20 years so I'll, I'll believe it when I'm sitting in the movie theater watching it. Uh, one thing that I'll, I'll mention it because it's a grain of salt rumor person heard from a person who heard from a person. I'm only mentioning it because it lines up with everything that we know to be true is that apparently Hasbro is invested in using elements of the Energon universe in the storytelling of the movie. And it makes sense because we've seen how closely the Energon universe is tied into classified. Uh, and, and why not? If the basis is there in existing media that people are already familiar with, why not go off of that rather than trying to create some new thing? And if we get character designs that are similar and storylines that are well, similar especially, to what we Especially have. like this one. Right? <laughs> Whereas uh, Channing Tatum is Optimus Prime and if Lorenzo Optimus Lamas is, is Megatron. 
if if Optimus has to have a mouth instead of a faceplate, why not? It that might mouth? as well be Channing Tatum. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, so we got a surprise drop last week. We were actually talking about this a little bit before the show started. Uh, and again, we've uh, lots to say about pre-orders and, and how they're happening and what's going on. But of course, we have to talk about the Tiger Paw and Wreckage. What do you guys think of this thing? He looks killer, pun intended. Like... If you didn't tell me that that was Tiger Force, like that is just a words we can't say on here figure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I like things when they're different and are going to pop on the shelf. And this does not look like now, granted, it's obviously based on it's Firefly. But color wise, the palette that they used, it doesn't look like anything else that we have in classified and that excites me. Like right off the bat, I'm like, oh, this is cool. It's going to look different. I'm going to put it on the shelf and it's going to stand out. Yeah, I think you could put him next to our classic Firefly and they won't look alike. I mean, just the the face mask uh, design alone, I was like, whoa. Yeah, doing that's... that much detail on it is was a really cool idea because... I mean, obviously, this is a an existing character, um, Sabretooth slash Wreckage from previous releases, but they did a completely, I mean, completely changed his color scheme, added all that detail on the mask. Um, still just a straight repaint of, of Firefly, but but I thought they did a great job with this. And you know and, we're big fans of the, the high contrast in the camo. Like, when, yeah. when there's camouflage and you can actually see the colors of the camouflage... Uh, that's that's peak design, and we knew we were going to get this repaint. We just didn't think we were going to get get it this soon. Right. Yeah, <laughs> potentially before uh, we even get the ferret. Yeah, I think. Uh, and I just noticed this: uh, the cannon actually has uh, some paint on it, as opposed to the ferret, which is all red and, and is a uh, something that some people weren't crazy about. But eh, I'm fine. Oh, because it's not like the original toy was like that. <laughs> well, but I think people were maybe mm -hmm. looking for some weathering or something. Uh, but anyway, I, I pre-ordered from Pulse, which it dropped out of nowhere at 9 a.m. Uh, yeah, we saw 11th. pictures the night before. Yes. And then leaked. the next morning it went live 9 a.m. for yeah for the Pulse uh, premium members. But, by but the it was time... sold out by 10.15. Well, I mean, it was sold out by for uh, at 19 after on Pulse, it was sold out. And the email came through at 15 after. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, and then Target, it went up, I think, around like one or two or something like that. And it, it was there for a good three hours or so on Target, I believe. So, but, but it will, you know, it's going to be back in stock. Uh, it will, if it follows the pattern of previous releases, it will be plentiful in stores. It won't be a problem to get and potentially we'll even, you know, head to clearance. So uh, not, not that we are ever going to encourage anybody to wait for clearance because that's a whole other issue that we're going to have to talk about uh, on another episode. Not even just clearance. It could be Target could do another sale like they did uh, about what a month ago where they put all their classified stuff. Yeah, up right, right. Mm -hmm. Like 25, 30% off. And I like now that the Target's getting the newer waves because when I pop in there, not the one by my house, but the one by work, I'm seeing Mutt and Junkyard and Metalhead, and it just makes my heart happy. Uh, so one more item before we move on, something that I feel like we can't not talk about anymore, that much, much like the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes... <laughs> Uh, I feel like ramen toys have become undeniable. They I thought you were going to say they finished the story. <laughs> well, they haven't finished the story yet. <laughs> the, to me, ramen toys will have finished the story when I have one of their products in front of me to review. Like that's that's when that story will be finished. And it could well be this van. Uh, this is the image that popped up that I said, we're going to have to talk about this. Uh this excites me. I mean, this is another one of those aspects of my childhood. Uh, I, I would sit down and I would watch a team and uh, chips with my dad in the evenings. Like those were the shows we watched together. And this van, I mean, this looks beautiful. What, what can you say? And the fact that the, 
the deluxe version that we're seeing here that has the show accurate deco, which by the way, I didn't even realize, like when I was a kid, I thought the van was black with a red stripe on it. I had no idea that silver was at the top until much, much later in life. Uh, See, I, I knew because I remember going to Universal Studios and picking the whole thing up when I was a kid because you could lift it. Oh, wow. I, yeah, they I, had, yeah, they had, they had it like, you know, hollowed out so you could actually just like a, a 12 year old child like I was. Wow, that's amazing. The whole thing up. Did, did you also get slimed? Uh, no, this was before sliming was really a thing. Oh I my think gosh. this was you were a wee lad then. This was Universal California. Yes, not Universal California. Orlando. Oh, okay, okay. Because it didn't exist when Noel was a kid. Never been, never been. Uh, but anyway, this thing looks beautiful. Uh, and if if they bring this the deluxe version in at the hundred and fifty dollar price point that they're talking about, ah, that's pretty impressive. I think. Yeah. Start customizing your classified A team figures now. I know, right? I don't uh, know. Like we've been talking about, you know, motorcycles for the dreadnoughts, and I get that in media, that's what they've been shown with. But like when you sent this, all I could think of was just I want it without the red stripes. And I'm going to order a bunch of dreadnought stickers from Toy Hacks. Well, they're doing a basic version. And and really what I would like to have is Clarence Boddicker and his crew to put in the back so I can get some random figure and say, can you fly, Bobby? And then throw it out the back. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this it looks cool. And we're going to have to follow along and see what these guys are doing, especially now that we've seen this, which they've talked about quite a bit. Um and I don't know, and again, this is a conversation I'm going to have to bullet point for a later episode, although we might talk to the Grindhouse guys about this a little bit, because I'm very interested in toy scaling. A lot of collectors seem determined that everything should be full actual size for the scale, like they want an actual 1 12th scale tank rather than something that's scaled to be a toy. Uh, I'm okay with toy scaling. For space concerns, for for expense concerns, for just practicality, I've lived with toy scaling my whole entire life. Every every toy I have in this room is not like very few things are actual scale. It's all scaled down to be a toy, uh, and I'm pretty much okay with that. And I mean, look at this. This is big enough as it is. That's that's a six inch. That's a one twelve scale figure in that turret. Mm -hmm. Think about how big this thing is. Well, just at this size. My thought with it is. It's a tank, and it's meant to accommodate one twelfth figures. But imagine this with your three and three quarter inch figures, because oh my gosh, I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, I mean, I think it would look fantastic. And see, my first thought was, I know this is test plastic. I get that, but my first <laughs> thought was, oh, if they're making these glow in the dark, <laughs> <laughs> I will not be able to say no. I'll take a glow like, in the dark tank. Let's go. G.I. Joe Glow Force. See, look at this. Look how big. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a, Sky Striker is a large vehicle. And that's the height, the, the full dimensions of that thing. That's a lot of space, especially for th this is. And I appreciate that they're doing the different, uh, the, the turret, the Wolverine rockets, the bridge layer, like they're doing a combo type of thing. But let's be honest here. That's a lot of real estate for a bridge layer. <laughs> I loved that vehicle when I was a kid, but it is not exactly like peak military performance vehicle for me. But uh, there's that's the base design. And then that's with the uh, rocket launcher turrets that I think they've got a specific name for. Uh, and then finally, they've got a completely alternate tank, which seems much less copyright infringing. Uh, that looks pretty cool. It's almost like uh, it's almost like a hiss version of the Mobat. Oh, see, yeah. I was thinking like Captain Power. <laughs> oh man, that would look great in like navy and gold. Oh well, or but the villain had that cannon thing, and its colors plasma were plasma cannon black. situation. Whatever's going on there, yeah. But I, I cool. love this, and and it's still not cheap, but Ramen Toys has always been what I consider fair with their pricing. Well, my concern with Ramen Toys, and I, I have not ordered anything from them as of yet, I, I would 
prefer to get stuff through Big Bad if I can for that nice $4 shipping. But my concern with ramen toys has always been, hey, pre-order now and we'll let you know how much shipping is when it comes in. I'm like, which I get it. Like from a business standpoint, that makes sense for them to do. But from a customer standpoint, that makes me a little uncomfortable. (laughs) Uh, All right. We got to catch up with the chat. We got all kinds of stuff going on over here. Uh, everybody excited to see wreckage. I think people are more excited about wreckage than they are about the tiger paw, to be honest. Um, Kevin Riddle is in here. Action J is in here. Terrible execution on the pre-order. Yeah, I, I would someday, I would love it if we could get like the book of classified, you know, 20 years from now that tells all the behind the scenes stories of what happened with the classified line. <laughs> I'd be very, very interested in that. Yeah. Rachel Salinas. Good point. What's gridiron going to add to this? <laughs> uh, okay. So we have some very special guests tonight and uh, they deserve a very special introduction. <laughs> so one of the things that we have to discuss is Sergeant Slaughter. Now, to the casual fan, it may seem impossible that the paragon of virtue, the realist of American heroes, Sergeant Slaughter, could ever diverge down a path of evil. But ladies and gentlemen, not only is it happening in 2024, it already happened in 1990 when Sergeant Slaughter chose the path of evil and represented the evil Iraqis in wwe and could only be stopped by hulk hogan (laughs) in some kind of preposterous commando getup. that's right the hulkster had to to suit up to stop the evil sergeant slaughter he looks like rock and roll's dad let's not forget (laughs) when he was one of the stooges and uh dx had to wear the oh that's true the visors with the windshield wipers well he wasn't so much evil then as just misguided but now Uh. in 2024 (laughs) sergeant slaughter is once again choosing evil in the form of of the cobra warlord we've talked about this before on the show cobra warlord is a custom figure that you are going to be able to create at joe fest 2024 uh we're going to get into some detail about it tonight because our special guests here on the show are chris scott and mark gerwig from grindhouse toys chris and mark uh welcome to the show we're very excited to have you here because this cobra warlord is mind-blowing uh i i got in not even knowing if i was going to actually be able to participate in the customization class i signed up i was like i don't i can't take any chances with this i've got to hopefully be able to get the parts at least even if i can't get in friday morning this thing looks awesome but before we get to that tell us a little bit about yourselves about grindhouse toys uh and and what's going on thanks guys i'm glad you guys uh dig it uh that's that's just been a childhood uh like kind of that fan fiction you know mashing things up that i've wanted to do forever and uh but no yeah i'm uh, part of grindhouse toys i mean i'm that's me uh i i've always wanted to you know mess around with some of this stuff and it, it's been awesome getting to play around in toys and and i've only been doing it for a little while but you know i love it and mark over here uh sculpted the hell out of this thing and it's 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 beautiful i'm, I'm so excited for it so the the one piece and, and i want to talk a little bit about what exactly is involved here but the one thing that was the must-have for me was the cobra heavyweight championship how did that what was what was the process of designing that thing well i'm a big oh my gosh oh there it is there it is (laughs) we gotta get that you hold that up one more time look at mark prepared that's a beauty it's the winged cobra yes it's not the winged eagle it's the winged cobra (laughs) (laughs) so so, you know, I, I'm a huge wrestling fan, and so I've been appreciating uh, listening to you guys here, you know, dropping some uh, wrestling nuggets for us all here. And just growing up, you know, I, I used to rent that that WrestleMania, what is it, 7, you know, where 
Hogan and, and Slaughter over and over and being a G.I. Joe fan, I was like, what is this? this is amazing. I didn't even care that Slaughter was an enemy. And yeah, yeah. the whole the title title belt came to me as like, you know, Sergeant Slaughter has that G.I. Joe title belt. I love it. Like that thing's so cool. Like being the winged eagle, being the G.I. Joe title belt. I was like, that's cool. But he was a heel when he won the world title. The only time he won the WWE world title was a heel and all like he should be a cobra. And so I always thought, you know, I want an Iraqi sympathizer style Sergeant Slaughter. And having that, you know, and being able to do that, you know, I sketched some stuff out and, you know, me and Mark talking about it. And I'm like, he's got to have a belt. Like, we have to have the world title. And, and, and Mark was like, are you sure? You know, like, is that, is that a, are you just making this so you can have a Cobra world title? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, maybe, maybe. Uh, <laughs> um, spoiler also. I may also have an actual full size one at Joe Fest. Uh, oh man! So you guys are gonna have to come check that out. <laughs> we, I, I have looked into. I have not pulled the trigger yet. I have definitely looked into an Audible Interlude Championship oh. belt. I, I've because exactly that at conventions having a piece like that for people to like take pictures of, interact with, like yeah, that's huge. It's a great thing. And as far as the Cobra Championship. Nothing makes more sense because as into branding as Cobra Commander is, of course he's going to have a championship belt. Like that's a no brainer. I can't believe we haven't seen it before. <laughs> that's that's awesome. And, and and like I had fun with it too. And you know, it's it's instead of world heavyweight champion, if you read the the font, it says world domination champion. Oh, that's uh, yeah. and you know, just little little fun moments in there but yeah it's it's gonna be a full i'm gonna have that replica one it's gonna be I, exactly like you said i want to have people taking pictures with it i gotta yeah. get a picture with sarge holding it that's why that's like that's all i was like i gotta have that and he's got to sign it. it's got to be put up there with my desk uh you know but yeah i'm so excited for this thing and and you know me and mark hammered out a lot of details going over like the gun like we're like we don't want him to have just you know an ak-47 but we wanted something kind of you know like an iraqi you know to fit the the motif of of that and and so we went with that like 40 millimeter grenade launcher um you know that's an ak-47 and just just some yep there it is oh uh, here it is over there yeah. i need to just keep mark on the big screen i know he's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a beauty uh yeah. and the underslung uh, grenade launcher um oh, in, in my in 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 my oh did i say grenade launcher you did I, my brain um, i yeah i you i apologize me. for correcting you <laughs> no, no, I'm glad you did because I just ramble, man. Um, and in my head, that's a incendiary rounded uh, shotgun. So he's fire, you know, he's he's catching Joe's on fire with that thing. If uh, you know, just just completely evil because you know, Doctor Mindbender has taken control and and they've they've taken him over. Uh, there there will be a file card, uh, maybe a full card back. Oh, uh, you know, man. For the, we're not really advertising that fully but you know maybe there will be uh it's possible so, maybe yeah we don't know show up and find out exactly and there's not that many uh, spots left on the class so if anybody's interested in it jump in there uh, so as far as how the figure came together i'm sure you probably want to save some stuff for the class as far as like uh, kind of the thrill of discovering oh what are we doing here but what are some other key elements we've got the the championship belt Yep. We've got the firearm. Uh, it looks like he's got a pretty unique vest going on. Yeah. So he's got the, he's got the vest kind of body armor. I, it's pretty much like a married version of a, uh, a crimson guard and a, a Viper. There it is again. Um, <laughs> Sorry. You know, just, yeah, two this, of my this favorite. Is, this is my shoddy right. paint job. So excuse that. That's what not is, shoddy. What? It looks great. Yeah. looks yeah. beautiful. That, but this is what you would actually get. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, so we get to paint the vest? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that that's yeah. This this is a class at heart. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a lengthy. Uh, like, no, I I cannot tell you how much I I love that for for people to get that opportunity because I I it, it's something I enjoy doing and it can be intimidating when when you're looking at customs that people make to go oh how do i do this or you know your first couple of times out the paint is too thick and you're like oh i can't do this so to walk people through that whole process as well major kudos well and that's what i appreciated about it is like you said something like that is intimidating but being able to do it in a group environment as, as sort of a class session and 
another problem with customization, you know, I, I showed you guys that Magnum PI that I bought a few weeks ago that I'm never going to have time to paint that. So you sign up for the class and you're blocking your time off. It's done. It's, it's in advance. You're, you're, you, it's, you don't have to worry about when am I going to make time to do this? The time is there and you're going to have experts to help you every step of the way. Exactly. And, and that's what I wanted to have is, is I've done like the custom class the last few, I mean, Joe, the first Joe Fest or maybe the second Joe Fest, I believe was my first custom class that I got to be a part of. And, you know, John Russell did an amazing job with that. And I had a lot of fun, you know, making his figures and just that's what really got me into customizing and working on toys. Uh, so I wanted to bring that back to, you know, he wasn't going to do it this year. And so me and Mark got together and we're like, hey, let's let's you know get this going and um, see if we can make the custom class. And I wanted something that was easy enough and not too intimidating because like you said, it, it, it can be intimidating when you're like, oh, I got to do all this and this. And if you don't know what you're doing, it's not that difficult if you're just taught a little bit. And I want to teach everybody how to do it. And we, we did a vest, you know, the beret, the gun, the championship belt, but nothing like too crazy. I, I don't want to be like, hey, you guys got to paint eyes. First day. Here you right. Go. We're <laughs> popping pegs out. Yeah. <laughs> Boiling. Oh, we'll, we'll be doing some of that because that vest oh, slides nice. over the uh, the body. But it's going to be pretty easy because we have a whole thing and just pop the arm. Because the cool thing about that classified Sarge is if you take like, say you take like Dusty or, or one of the smaller classified figures, if you pull the arms out, the, those butterfly joints like to pop out. Yeah. Um, but with Sarge's traps are so huge that it's really easy. You just get a little heat. Those arms pop out. I'll heat up the, the vest. It comes right you on You could there. say it's trapped oh. in there. It, oh, yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it because, so well, with the traps there. being taller, does that mean that the, the pegs in the butterfly joint are like a little mm -hmm. longer? Is yep. that why they stay in better? Exactly. Wow. Toy That's engineering. Why, like, if you look at like the the WWE Ultimate figures, a lot of those have the the arms that pop out because they're bigger figures, so they got yeah, usually bigger yeah. traps. You know, being a wrestler and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so that that works out great. But like, it's going to be pretty easy, I think, for everyone. And I'm also going to do a like a, a instruction sheet with it, and I'm going to make a video. So it's not just like I want to walk around and show everybody how to do things, but like maybe you don't finish in the class or you don't you know, you want to work at your own time, pace or, you know, can only be there for an hour because you have to set up a booth or, you know, any of that, those reasons. I wanted it to be something that you still could take home if you want to and do it in your own time. Because the last few years when I do the custom class, I still haven't finished a lot of the figures because right. I talk too much to everybody and hang out, you know? <laughs> well, and that's also, everybody learns things differently. Some yeah. folks in that class are going to want to really focus in on you, what you're saying, have questions and want to engage. Some folks are just going to do it from the video. Like mm -hmm. people take information in, in different ways. So it's great that you've kind of taken that into account and have that as a resource of how to do this. Uh, so we've got some stuff in the chat here. We're going to talk about real quick. First of all, our pal Thor Golden Cub in the super chat. Super chat. Uh, super chat is still going to tactical shovels. I am going to figure these damn tactical shovels out. I promise you. Thor Golden Cub says, hi, guys. Good to see you. Just got my Super 7 Baroness and Zartan this week. Love color changing. Got classified Big Boa, and he's big and detailed. Classified Big Boa is awesome. And that Zartan, that Super 7 Zartan, that color change is Boom. Like you get him outside in the sunlight and it just happens. It's great. Uh, Jeff Butler is asking uh, Grindhouse Toys, will you be presenting, uh, I think he's a uh, Cobra, Cobra Warlord figure to Sarge mm -hmm. at Joe Fest? Uh, yeah, that's the plan. I'm going to have one painted up. Uh, I've only painted one so far, and that's the one Eddie American has right now that's been taking all the really cool pictures that I've been posting. Um, but the, yeah, I'm going to make a whole one just for him. I'm going to like be super intricate with that one and make it the best i can and uh because i yeah i gotta i gotta give sarge a a, a figure so well, i had to ask it is i mean i presume sarge is aware of this and or, or is he not i don't i don't know if he's seen it yet i feel like he would have said something if he had okay. you know like and been like hey what's going on you know but yeah. talking to um ed and going everything with joe fest he, uh you know he he says if we bring him one and he's just gonna be excited he loves oh, yeah. you know any any times you know i don't know if you guys watched the documentary that they they did on what was it a and e maybe the, the new documentary on him um he he collects all anything that's sarge related and you know all of that so i if i can make him one i think that'll be really cool for him to have and yeah, absolutely. Well, and also he's he's just the sweetest guy. 
Mm-hmm. Like he he is he's the meet your heroes guy because he's going to be nice to everyone. He's going to spend time with everyone. He's he's going to give you what you want from meeting Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, it's going to put you in a headlock. Yes, yes. <laughs> the Cobra he's Clutch. Spell Come on, your secret <laughs> enemy countries. Got it. Got it. Uh, Rachel Salinas asks: Is this an official passing of the baton from one eighteenth to one twelfth for the custom class? Yes, market. pretty much. Yes, because you know, as much as I love one eighteen scale, I mean, I have a Dread Trooper here, which is one eighteen scale. Um, I I just feel one twelfth is still the future. I mean, I love you know. I feel like a lot more classified fans have really found Joe, or or, or past Joe fans have just come back because you know, being Legends collectors or Star Wars collectors or any of that stuff, and just being in this new new scale. I mean. I just feel we're going to have more people really involved with it. And, you know, we're not going to forget 118th, you know, maybe one day, you know, we do both, you know, we can have an, a double option or something of that nature, because I don't want to forget about 118th. There's so much good product out there for that too. So. Well, and I, I think we're in a kind of a weird time for 118th right now where, well, first of all, 112th is, is the scale of note. It just is. Uh, and you can see it with independent stuff, which we'll talk about in a little bit, like Operation Monster Force or the Naughty or Nice collection, where these are uh, fresh monkey fiction. You know, they're not Hasbro. They're not Mattel. Mm-hmm. But that's the scale that they're going with for these lines. And 118th scale, fr- from what I see from the fandom, it seems like O-Ring is a little more exciting than modern style articulation at the moment. It just has more buzz. I, I agree. Um, you know, I, I feel like 118th will come back at one point, like how you were talking about with the ramen toy vehicles. Like, I mean, how many big vehicles can we really have before there's absolutely no space? I'm pretty much at that limit right now. Um, and I think people will start being like, oh, 118th is pretty good again, you know? <laughs> you know, we need to go back to that size. Uh, but no, like, yeah, 112th is just, it, it's just, it's cool. It's I don't know if it's just that whole thing when you're like a little kid, and you have a GI Joe, it's kind of the same size when you're an adult now, you know, like that yeah. 112 scale is kind of taking that and just the quality and the look of these figures. And yeah, with Monster Force or or Arlen and, and, and Bill's, you know, Naughty or Nice, it's just it's just it's just a nice figure like that, you know, being that and scale. it's the the 112 is just as an adult, it's better hand candy. Mm-hmm. like to play with and mess around with and like because i'll i'll complain all the time about the extra kibble that are on the classified figures like stuff that moves around or falls off as you pose them well go back and try and collect some of the pursuit of cobra stuff or like the late line 25th an- or 50th anniversary stuff with all the little tiny doodads that just you touch the figure and a cascade of accessories <laughs> falls off so one twelfth is easier for my giant clumsy yeah. hands to manage at this point the 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 bullet from low light from pursuit of cobra the... <laughs> when that got brought up when they were talking about the classified uh low light and how it shared some elements and somebody mentioned that bullet i'd completely forgotten about it had no yeah. idea if i even still had it or not it's it's it fortunately it's still in the case okay. of the line, but but yeah and, and the thing is like let's be honest what is the point of that bullet come on <laughs> right <laughs> like i can understand like like what like uh gridiron's done like well they'll have like something maybe like it's going into you know the yes. chamber or something like yeah. that would be cool but yeah it's it's just you know for toy photography but not in 118th scale like come on like you're not going to really be able to manipulate it into that <laughs> that pose well one thing that I've, I've started seeing a little more frequently lately um and i'm trying to think what line is you well classified has done it in a couple of spots i think the WWE Mattel has done it with some WWE figures where the accessories molded into the hand. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to have like a bullet molded into the hand for the toy photography, so you don't have to worry about losing the bullet. You can still get the cool picture and it'll actually pose the way it's supposed to pose as opposed to trying to fumble it around and get it in the fingers and everything else. Um, They did a Mattel innovation that if they had nailed it, I would have appreciated it. They did the, uh, Mega Powers handshake two figure set, and they molded Macho Man and Hulk Hogan's hands as one. So they're two separate figures. They have interchangeable hands, but one of the interchangeable hands is their handshake, and you just put that, plug that into both of them, 
And that way you don't have to worry about trying to get two C grips to handshake or some weird thing. It's already done. And I love seeing innovation like that. But you're saying they didn't nail it? Well, and this is... Only because I, there's... I have at least three SH figure arts figures that have that as an accessor, you know, as oh, an really? extra hand. <laughs> well, yeah, what, what, here's because what they you did. can recreate very specific scenes from those animes. Macho Man has tape on his fingers. Like, that's just a thing. It's always there. He's got on the figure. He's got his regular hands. He has it on right. the handshake. They didn't paint the tape. On his fingers. So so the central aspect of that whole entire set, the handshake, <laughs> is wrong. And it drives me insane. But see, this is where going to the customizing class will come in handy. I'm because you can now come back hell figure. and and <laughs> paint it white. I'm not Or doing it. <laughs> if you're a Stones fan, you can paint it black. So let's, get, <laughs> let's get one of those little paint pens. That's easy enough. Uh, yeah, you're little right. Little paint markers. So speaking of accessories... Uh, you guys obviously specialize in accessories. Like that's one of the things that we see. As a matter of fact, if you go to uh, Mark II, is it Mark II Design or Mark II Toys dot com? So, uh, so Chris and I are kind of two separate entities, right? Like that's from, what I'm trying to. I, uh, Mark II Design mm-hmm. and Mark II Toys. He's Grindhouse Toys. Okay. He does paint masters for Fresh Monkey fix for pretty much all the Fresh Monkey Fiction stuff. Okay. Um, and I do my my 3D design, 3D printing thing. So let's talk a little bit then about because I, I I just would like to talk about some of the favorite kinds of accessories that you guys see as collectors or want to work on or or, or see included with things as collectors because we've got we're in this age now. I've actually complained about too many accessories where we have swappable hands. Uh, do we want our blasters to have removable cartridges and scopes and all these other little bits and pieces. Like how do you guys view the economy of accessories and what do you like to see with products? So I'll, I'll start off. Like I'll let you go, yeah. <laughs> I personally, I like, I like things to look correct and I am not a fan of removable magazines for that reason. I think action force does it well where they often have, places for those mags to go because that makes sense yeah but just having a removable magazine that can't go anywhere to me is just a thing that's going to get lost and to pull it off you either need to you know make the magazine well bigger or make the magazine smaller or some type of in-between thing and um to me it just never it doesn't look right typically a magazine well in a rifle is it's basically sheet metal it's a millimeter and change thick right like uh so at 112 whatever scale in plastic the magazines are just never quite perfect to in my eyes Hmm. uh so i like so i have weapon sets so i've got mark ii design and mark ii toys mark ii toys is manufactured products and i've just got the two weapon sets right now a and b and then mark ii design i do the the freelance design work but i also have like the etsy store and patreon that kind of stuff now so, I'm a little different on that just because I, I love I love the removable you know uh, magazines you know just, just that's just me personally like not one eighteenth but like one twelfth like yeah. it gives it that toyetic kind of funness I mean as long as it's not if it's done right and the tolerances are correct where you put that mag in there and it stays exactly yes and you know same with like and like I don't want I don't need something like super tiny that I'm trying to put on and then it falls off that's annoying you know like I don't want that of course uh but if stuff can work and if it's designed properly and it it, I don't it doesn't have to be as realistic for me especially if it's you know like say you got this big cobra rifle or or something that's a little sci-fi like cool like I want the magazine to come out and um you know like some of the stuff we were talking a little bit about monster force uh you know series one we've been seeing some of the I'm, we're finally getting some of the paint samples but like I painted the hopefully the paint samples I gotta ask Bill about this now but I painted the top of the magazines to have the actual bu- the, the bullet to be painted because that's one thing I've always liked about Mezco or or, or stuff of that nature. Dude, where it's, oh, that's cool. The, yeah, the one twelve collective stuff. It's funny because I've as much as I because I just reviewed the one twelve collective Storm Shadow, and you know as much as I complain about too many accessories, I feel like the Mezco stuff is it's a different product. It is. It's a completely different experience. 
uh, opening it up, laying everything out, seeing everything in there, making decisions about how you're going to gear up the figure before you put it on the shelf. And again, I'm, I'm not a toy photographer, but I can only imagine people who are, those have to be the best figures in the world. Yeah. Because stuff you're talking about uh, with, you know, the, the cartridges having the bullet mm -hmm. painted in the top, like you can see every single little detail is there. And it's amazing. The storm shadow, all of the throwing knives go into his sash. He's got two throwing stars that mount to it. Like, oh, that's cool. it's just depends on what the product is, I guess. If it's something I'm just going to get for fun, like, like with classified, I'm just going to get it for fun, mess around with it, put it on the shelf. I don't need tons and tons of doodads. Uh, but with Mezco, it's a different story. And it looks to me like, and I don't know how much you guys can talk about Operation Monster Force at this point, uh, but it looks like there's this interesting middle ground there where they are, they're almost toys as art from, from what I have seen thus far, where you have a tremendous amount of detail, but it does still feel like something that's playable. Oh, a hundred percent. And, and th what's awesome, like even just the early paint samples that I've gotten back for, for monster force have been, they feel great. Like, I don't know if you guys collect any four horsemen figures or anything like that, but got um, a few, I don't know, like the feel feels pretty good, but we wanted to kind of have that feel, but with the, you know, articulation of classified and, and, and what have you, but I wanted, I, I, I wanted to push, you know, that was one thing me and Bill talked about early on was just really pushing the paint apps and having as much detail and then like the gear is all modular as well so like the the, the mag pouches and like there's a rate like declan van helsing has like a radio pouch uh or radio that you know pegs in or his his uh, uh crossbow crossbow bolts that go on his leg and all that stuff you know it it, it still can be it has a ton of accessories so it kind of it's that middle ground between like a classified and a mezco figure because like i love mezco but like i just set up my new snake eyes i, I finally set them up and it's awesome, but still, you got to be very careful. You don't want to break anything. It's a little fragile. Whereas yeah. this, like with with Monster Force, it feels good. Like you're not as you know, it feels a little more classified, but they're not gummy, so that's really nice because <laughs> you're actually not you know, like yeah. doing this. Um, oh, and, Bill Bill Murphy is here in the chat, and hey, he said, "Yep, yes. the bullets are painted. Just checked. <laughs> nice, nice, Bill. Thank you, thank you for uh, saving me on that." <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. Like, I'm really excited for people to get these in hand and we're really close. Uh, he just got the, that newest round of paint samples. Um, and he, he's just, he's, he just sent me a ton of pictures, like literally as we got on here and he's like, look, they look so good. Can, can we have even a wide ball? Cause of course you can go to bigbadtoystore.com right now, order. I think the first two waves are currently yeah. up for pre-order. Uh, and wave one still says, second quarter 2024 how uh, how close to that are we looking can we, we comment should be pretty close to that i mean like it's it's like these are if if everything's good and like i asked him i'm like is there any problems with these and i don't think they are as long as we are good with that i mean we can go into you know get the production going and it'll be fast the factory is quick when it once it's the the thing that takes the longest and i don't know if you guys are familiar with any of this is just the back and forth like okay yeah. no that's not good enough like you know, a lot of people are like, Hey, where's my stuff? Where's my stuff? And I understand that. Cause you know, you order something you want it. And that's why we love going with big bad because people don't, you don't have to have your money taken, you know, yeah. like you could just sit on it. It's not like Kickstarter, which nothing wrong with Kickstarter. I love Kickstarter too, but you're not sitting there like, ah, where's my, you know, hundred, two hundred dollars you know, for my figures, but these will be soon. And, and we just wanted to make sure everything was perfect. Because didn't you guys, not like recently i feel like it was like a month or or two back um because you put out a statement or something saying like hey we got some samples it's not where we want it to be mm -hmm. so we're making some changes like i love that i i have said that since day one like with super seven with anybody if you tell us we as the people that are making this are not satisfied so let's wait let's have them fix it rather than get product just to get product out yeah. so kudos and and absolutely uh take as much time as it needs because those figures they yeah look incredible when when they hit you're you're gonna hear the screams of joy 
Um, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm all excited. the way from Florida, so <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. You know, that's one thing. I've just been really excited for people to get these, and 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 just I try to. That's one of the things that takes a while too. Is like I paint a paint master. And I'm like, all right, I want it to look like this. And I spend forever on it because I want to try to get as much detail out of this thing. I mean, there's washes, there's dry brushing, there's, you know, little intricate details. And then like the tampos or just anything that's on there, just very detailed and very cool looking. And like, like Declan Van Helsing has like sleeve tattoos on his forearms and just trying to get that right. And, and where it works and where I want you to have something that you put on your desk and you kind of play around with. And you're like, wow, this is really cool and i i'm glad it, it's right I, it would suck to be like it's almost there you know it, it yeah. almost made it to you know that it's potential so speaking of almost there and and this might be more of a question for mark but i also want to hear your opinion on it chris um so obviously with classified or other one twelfth scale lines we see those renders come out and like, let's use the Cobra Eel as the most recent perfect example, because you see that figure and you're like, wow, that is what I want. And then you look at the accessories and you go, oh, what? Okay, that's not what I was thinking. <laughs> so where for you as someone who does designing, when you see stuff like that, are you already thinking, well, I know that I can print this, I can make this better, I can print this up and sell it to the masses? Or is it more of a, I have to have this so that my figure looks good and it just so happens that I can still produce it and sell it to the masses? Kind of that, the there you go, Mark, right there. There's so, uh, something you just did. That's that's a good segue, Mark. You right. just you just give me the cue when you're ready for the presentation. Well, let's, just, let's just power through that real quick. Let's and do then it. I'll, I'll, then I'll answer the question. So every once in a while, I go on, on a show, and then they they're like, "You got anything to show off?" And I go, uh, <laughs> "No." So I, I so this, this was me being proactive for that. But yeah, so I made I'm making um. Some, I'm calling it a retro gear pack for the the snow serpent. So, uh, I was I was definitely surprised initially that they weren't doing this for the for the retro carded figure. We we all were, <laughs> and I think you know it just it like it it would be a lot of tooling, right? It's a lot of additional yeah. tooling when they already did so much for that figure. So I I imagine that's kind of why that just wasn't in the cards for them but uh you know if if i was on that team and the job was you can only make exactly what they made 30 40 years ago that would kind of suck yeah like out of the gate just kind of stifling any creativity or innovation right that's that's not good mm -hmm. so i don't you know they're they're i think they're doing a great job with the figures um you know some people want that retro style gear some don't care i'm actually in the uh in the i don't care boat believe it or not like i kind of just i got started in 2020 during the lockdown i had extra time on my hands and was still teaching myself to do 3d design so that's what put me on the path it was like oh i i bet i could make duke's original gun so i did that and it got a response online so i did something else and i did something else and so it's it's really more about like growing my ego than it is me getting the stuff I need. <laughs> well, see, I'm I'm with you. I feel like and and I think we're headed into a really great place with classified because my hope is that going forward we can get things like because I liked the blackout designs. I thought they were interesting, I thought they were fun, I thought they were good updates of G.I. Joe characters that I knew. Uh and I would like to see updated things in the main line and then retro stuff that's like what I grew up with in the retro line. Like, I want both. I like both things. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, because I'm it's, totally the same, yeah. It, it's, 
as as d- delighted as I was by Retro Duke, Retro Scarlet, and and Retro Rakondo, even though like the Tiger Force was pretty on point with the accessories and whatnot. But like, I loved those, but they're also kind of there's no thrill of discovery there. There's no oh, what's new? How have they changed things? And look, sometimes how have they changed things? Doesn't land with me. But I would rather have the occasional thing that I don't agree with than just a straightforward line of like, okay, yeah, it's another big version of the same character. Sure, sure. I think I'm the only person in the fandom that actually likes Roadblock version two, three, whatever it was. It's Space for- Age Gun because it's it's Overwatch. It, for me, it was um, XCOM. I thought if if you would just put that figure in front of me and said it was an XCOM figure, I'd have been like, that's awesome. That's perfect. Well, an XCOM is the game that I think a lot of people tend to reference when they say what a G.I. Joe game should be like. I, I believe Agreed. I've heard that a few They're times. Turn-based. But, yeah, squad-based, turn-based. Uh, if I were to make a G.I. Joe game, that's 1,000% what I would base it on, is that type of thing. Like, if you have Duke on your team, it gives a buff to blah, blah, blah. Like, Yeah. You pick a sniper, you've got low light, you've got sci-fi, you've got technically snow job. Like, uh, yeah, assemble assemble the team with the stuff you need. Yeah, see, I really like that idea because that's that's how we were talking about this last week a little bit, actually. Um, or no, I take it back. And uh, When I was talking about the Dragonfly, uh, I, I did like kind of a retrospective on the Dragonfly at audiblearmy.com. Uh, and I was talking about like when I was a kid, when I was playing with my buddy i'd be like all right it's time to go out on a mission and you get the dragonfly and you figure out you know obviously your pilot's wild bill who's your co-pilot who are you putting on the skids are you hanging somebody from the the winch underneath like who's your team who and that's part of the joe experience is what is the team because when you go back to the comics you go back to the cartoons like whatever the media is it's not Every once in a while, you get those singular stories. But for the most part, it's about Joe's acting as a unit. And I feel like for a game, that's got to be part of the gameplay, which I thought Operation Blackout was a lot of fun, but it didn't hit the team element like I feel like a G.I. Joe game needs to. There was a lot of of weird stuff in there, too. Oh, there was tons of weird stuff in there. (laughs) But... It was, you know, it's it's interesting to discover. It's like reading these new Skybound comics, like, where are they going? What is this? And it's interest. It's compelling in a way that something that was exactly what we already know to be isn't. Like, it's fun. We love revisiting the old stuff. We love the nostalgia. We love rereading the comics, rewatching the cartoons. But that, again, that element of discovery of the new stuff is where it's fun. And that's actually comes to the next thing I wanted to ask you about, Mark. Um, when you're designing something, they're probably completely different challenges in trying to recreate something that exists and trying to create something new, but that fits into a certain aesthetic, like with operation monster force, you know, you want something to look real and functional and like, this could be an actual weapon or item or whatever, but it does need to fit in with this aesthetic. What are the different challenges there of recreating versus trying to fit something into an, an existing new universe? The one thing that's pretty interesting is just because everything is, you know, no one's sculpting into wax. It's all on the computer. You've got pretty absolute control over the, the level of detail uh, and the elements that you can put into it. So you're limited by production how it's being made because there's a big difference between 3d printing and having something manufactured um and then it you know if you're having something manufactured are you definitely limited to a two-part mold because that kind of that can kind of limit some things because you can't have any undercuts are they going to be able to put in sliders are they able to do a three four five six piece mold um so it comes down to kind of budget budget dictates manufacturing dictates what your thing should look like yeah that, that's that's true because as like doing any design work on on monster force like i would go like when i first got into it i got a little crazy because i didn't understand a lot of that and so i'd be like we well, need to do this and this and this and bill would be like 
what are you doing, man? Like, calm down. Like, we can't we can't make all those things because it's crazy. Like, we we have to reuse parts. We have to make sure it's in the mold. You know, um, it has to be something that can you know be financially make it you know make sense because yeah it, you know stuff like that parts don't just work out like that. So like you have to understand that before you start designing things. Um, Mark actually just des- uh, I designed a gun for Monster Force. Uh, it was. So he Mark did the, the the graves. I don't know if you guys have seen the gravestone um, uh, foot peg, you know, the figure stand yes. um, for Monster Force. So yes. I, I drew that up. Mark tweaked it and made it better. Um, and that's really fun. But we also did a rifle. And for, for Declan, I liked that. So when I came on to Monster Force, a lot of like series one was designed pretty much like everything was pretty much designed. I just did all like the art direction, the colors, um, all of that stuff. But like, I wanted him to have a rifle. I really wanted to design a rifle for him. And so what I did is I took like a, a, a standard M4, but I gave it there. Like there's a few companies that do like where the magwell's a little different. And it, so it looks like a crusader or a knight kind of helmet. And I thought, okay, that really fits like the aesthetic of, you know, a, a, a vampire hunter. And so, and then I started thinking, I'm like, okay, well, that'd be really cool. Well, and he shouldn't have a bayonet. He should have something, some sort of cool attachment. And so I started thinking, oh, he should have like a silver spike. So he, you know, even though he's working with vampires, I want him to have something that like, if you look at it, you're like, well, he doesn't trust any of these guys. Like if, if one of them starts, you know, turning on him right in the heart. Um, and so little things like that are just really fun. And you want to, so you can bring something that people know, but also add in just little fun, little storytelling elements in there too. Well, and one thing that I've learned and, and for anybody that might be kind of interested in, toy design it's you got to parse through a lot of stuff to get to it but the major wrestling figure podcast which i've mentioned before and i'm a huge fan of has talked so much about the process of toys and one of the things that they discussed was the development of the second series of their super seven action figures and talking about tampos and how how much it costs just to have multiple paint <laughs> operations on a figure. And that's yeah. something that, you know, we all know, oh, this has more deco than that. But when it comes down to it, not just how many different paint operations there are, there are, but how they're applied. Because if you have a pattern that's supposed to go all the way around the figure, if you look at a classified figure, if you look at the Sarge right now, there are spots where the camo doesn't quite connect Mm -hmm. and it's because of how that tampo is applied to the figure and that's a consideration in design and that's is that something that you've i'm I'm looking at the oh you know what real quick i gotta ask you okay we have operation monster force experts here in the house there is something that we have been speculating about from the beginning you may or may not be able to answer this but fresh monkey fiction is somewhat famous for uh having portraits that might be familiar okay And every time I look at the Operation Monster Force Count Dracula figure, all I see in that portrait is Drew (laughs) McIntyre. I never even thought about that. That's even funnier because that was that was on before. I'll have to ask uh, Bill about that. I I can't answer that per se because that's that would be a great base for like a giant freaking Scottish Dracula. I'm I'm looking at it. I I don't I don't think you realize it's coming in, but Chris Chris and I are huge horror fans. (laughs) <laughs> like that's what that's what that's what like that's what aside from the gi joe thing the the next level thing was like oh shit we're into the same movies yeah well and that's uh that's why operation monster force is so p- perfect for me because uh horror is like my my whole side of the room over there is all neca nice all neca horror stuff um like i came up and seeing basically the combination of G.I. Joe and horror with Operation Monster Force. Uh, We've been talking about this since day one, uh, Mm -hmm. following this line and how excited we are for it. This this is actually, I might be wrong. Noel and Christian, correct me if I'm wrong. This might be the thing that prompted me to say, well, we're G.I. Joe and G.I. Joe adjacent. (laughs) I like that. That's awesome. Because I think it was we, like this and the occasional uh, Transformers talk. That and we we talked about Eagle happen. Force a little bit at first too. Yeah. Like, but 
But I mean, those are directly one... GI Joe inspired. I, right. This this veers yeah. off a little bit. Yeah. So this I... is the only non Joe line that every time a new figure promo has come out, we show it on the show and talk about it, just like we would yeah. a classified. Yeah, that's that's a fact. Yeah, we've been covering this just as much as we have classified. And I believe today, uh, just briefly before I got to uh, jump on here, uh, I th think I saw Werewolf by Chance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I should have snagged Ooh. a screenshot of that. Um, yeah, can we talk about the Werewolf? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that went up today. I'm so excited that finally, uh, you know, getting to unveil that. Uh, that's, you know, we did a did a partnership with that, you know, to use that veteran William, you know, body and Bill, Bill works a lot of magic with that, you know, talking to different companies and, and trying to utilize parts. Cause again, that's that tooling budget, which is, is crazy. It's so expensive to tool new parts. And, you know, could we make a whole new werewolf body? Sure. But like that one's amazing. And if we can, yeah. you know, put it in there. And so that was one of the first things I really got to mess around with. It was one of the early things that I got to play with. And what I did is I just did some color studies on a few different, you know styles with that and so I, getting to see those pictures i just got to see those like two days ago myself um i had done the paint master it might have been a year ago um for that guy so they sent me one of those uh veteran william figures oh, you know man. for ray and and i was like oh this it was just a test shot so it was like what you guys just showed about the ramen toys and so i got to paint it and have fun and i went with like a more like russian like camo on his you know pants because like this is an evil you know killer warg and you know with the green you know the od you know uniform and then i was like well i want to play around and i actually got to do some design elements in there and so like i drew a, a, a mini gun so that's why he comes with the mini gun and then that like predator almost like blades uh that was really fun and i just added that and i know i remember my son asking me when he saw that and he's like why well why does a werewolf need blades i'm like he has claws, sure, but you don't want to hurt your hands. Like, if you, if you can have a predator freaking, you know, double bladed, you know, gauntlet, why not? And so, as a toy, I think that's going to be really fun. Um, I'm going to actually post those pictures probably tomorrow from the actual color study from it, and then my paint master. But man, they they knocked it out. That that factory killed it because those pictures are actual the paint samples of what the figure is going to be and everything. Nice, that's amazing. Uh, Kevin Riddle popped in says veteran William is awesome. One of my top figures from last year so good it's so good it's it it, it feet like when i got that the 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 test shot the first test shot i got just feeling it in my hand i was like holy crap this feels solid and nice like oh i i've, I've been in because that was even before the veteran william had hit and i was like oh man i'm so excited for this and you know you never know there could be more later oh, oh. well that's the, the well, some of the um test shots that they had at joe fest last year are things that still haven't been announced. So I keep telling people, like, just wait, because <laughs> you've not seen anything yet. Yeah, we don't want to, like, you know, having Series 2 um, right there and showing off, like, some stuff, you know, having those for pre-order. But we have more, of course, in the pipeline. But we don't want to just keep going, hey, new pre-order, new yeah. pre-order, because we want right. to make sure everybody gets Series 1 in hand first and are, you know, excited. Because I feel once they get it in hand, they're like, okay, what's next? I'm ready now. Like, I need it. That's and that's one thing. I think as as a non Hasbro, non Mattel level toy company. Although really, even at those levels, they have to be careful about things. But I do think you have timing has got to be so difficult to deal with. As far as when do we know we're going to have this product? When is the hype going to be at a peak, rel like relative to this product, and then we can announce more product. And then, but also continue working on future stuff without even having put out the first wave yet, because you just, you have to, you have to keep working, Yeah. but you also have to be mindful of like, what is our timing here? What is the public awareness of what we're doing? Where's, where's the thirst level right now? Like yeah. there's so much, it seems like there would be to keep track of. It, re it really is. And being a smaller company, like with, with fresh monkey fiction or, 
you know, because, you know, these are all big, bad workshop figures as well, because these are exclusive big, bad toy store. This is their first real line as well. But like just being they're not it's not a Hasbro. It's not a Mattel, like you said. And so those guys have the money to really push stuff out yeah. and, and just get stuff out quicker, too. Um, you know, we have to wait for factories sometimes and a lot of independent toy companies have to, it, you know, a lot of the, a lot of guys, there's a lot of pre-orders still haven't been fulfilled from a lot of companies and it's nothing yeah. on them. It's just, it's hard to really gauge that. So now you're like, okay, this is going to come out, you know, in a year and a half, two years, maybe more, even the four horsemen have to deal with that stuff. And it's just, I don't know, like it's, it's hard to, to gauge that, you know, it'll be like, okay, yeah. if everybody going to be excited about that. And that's, what's cool about you know, Monster Force is, I feel like it's, it's, there's a lot of horror fans out there. There's a lot of people who love, you know, Frankenstein, Dracula, all that stuff, oh, yeah. but then also love GI Joe or military toys. And so I feel it's got a little timelessness to it. And um, I think, I think we're going to be okay. And we've been working on stuff like the factory already has, you know, some series two stuff. So they could start working on some of that. And, you know, a lot of it's in the pipeline. So once one is in hand, we could start, it'll be quicker. You know, you know, and we're going to show some stuff at Joe Fest and we're going to have some, you know, new prototypes out. And uh, I'm going to be still posting some stuff on on, you know, Instagram, same with Fresh Monkey Fiction, showing off some of the new stuff coming. But there's some cool stuff. And and I can't recommend strongly enough to anybody listening to this or watching right now. Uh, if you're at Joe Fest and you should be talk to all of these guys, talk to all of these toy companies, get the information, look at the product, in, engage, interact, because the enthusiasm that you guys have for this product, uh, it's infectious. You know, once once you talk to, well, I I bought this fella yes. last year at Joe <laughs> Fest uh, purely as a result of talking to it, it, Chris. It might have been you. Yeah, it was me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and it was stopping by the table, looking at the product, looking at the samples, and then seeing like. Look at that because 118th modern articulation Joe, like that, that was peak adult collecting for me in 2007 yeah. when the 25th anniversary started and the years that followed. Like, as much as I look back now and I'm like, some of these figures maybe aren't the best, I don't care. I'm keeping them all because yeah. the sentimentality of that time of collecting stuff was so cheap. And for the most part, like there were some challenges, but it was easy to find Toys R Us, Target, Wall, yeah. everywhere had it. Like it, it was just a different time. And so like that format of figure, even if it's not like super hot right now, is always going to have sentimentality for me. So when, when the Dread Trooper popped up, I was like, I'm in. I got to get, I got to grab one of those in that packaging is the greatest action figure packaging of all time. You just wait till the next figure. Then if you, oh, if you like that packaging, gosh. it's so, going to look. Speaking gonna look of cool. that packaging and sentimentality. Um, when you go to the grindhouse toys website, <laughs> that wish book style page that you have, I, I, I can't get enough. Like I, it's one of those that just every so often I just have to go and look at it and be like, this is real. This <laughs> is because when I first started with my toy photography hobby, that was more of the feeling that I tried to evoke was when you had the little pamphlet that showed the new mm -hmm. figures, you know, um, but seeing it looked like exactly what came from a wish book and then seeing all of um your dreadnoughts packing all like the, the t-rex one just just cracked <laughs> me up yeah just your i mean just going to your website just makes me just feel so happy just seeing that splash <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that makes a, me happy hearing that when, when that when, pops when up, it's, it, it's a good it, feeling when i see it i'm just like Damn that, Chris! <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love all of that. You know, like I love that nostalgic, you know, feeling of, and and just like I'll talk a little bit about the the, the next multiverse massacre uh, figure. Actually, I wanted yeah, to take do. it to the next level. Um, I don't know if it'll be in time for Joe Fest because I got my first paint samples uh, on the next figure uh, 
two weeks ago and they weren't up to snuff like i really went kind of crazy on the paint master because i always try like he has there's like a painted head like i won't give away too much but painted head but also translucent and then um oh, just fun and i'm i'm trying and I'm, I'm hoping there's some glow in the dark i can get out of oh, it oh my gosh um, but uh it's the packaging won't be plastic this time it won't be the actual clamshell it's going to be cardboard and it'll slip off and it's going to actually have a vhs oh, uh, i don't know if you guys are familiar with brian sour's work but he's doing the design work on it um and then uh mark pennington already finished all the artwork for it so oh um, my gosh which i'm really excited you know being a huge uh you know joe fan you know I, you guys probably know with mark with uh, yes. know, having doing everything he's done and see, he lives like two and a half hours away from me so i'll go over there and hang out a little bit and we'll talk toys and, and design and all that stuff so it's so fun and i'm so excited for the next figure and i really you know it's 118th still so i, I love that getting to still keep that alive as much as I can you know, because, you know, with the Marauders, those guys are doing amazing stuff over there still, you know, Skeletron now, I love their, you know, the new, you know, Robo Skull stuff and the, 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 the Wolf Troopers. Um, but like, I wanted to do something a little crazy and it's, it's, it's a bit of an homage figure, but in look, but story-wise, it's definitely pretty crazy and dark and a horror element sort of, you know, kind of an anti-hero against the Dread Troopers. So, I want to just keep continuing that story. So that'll be fun. I hope everybody likes it. Well, and having said that the, uh, what, what, how do you refer to the modern articulation 118 skin, you know, versus O-ring? Like what, what is I the nomenclature modern, for that? Modern, because that was what I was always, before six inch was a thing with, you know, the classified line, everybody right. you always had, you know, vintage or O-ring and then modern because of, you know, the 25th or. I or, feel like we need a better name for it. I, I don't do know. Need- I don't know what. I mean, it's only been like twenty five years now. Yeah, I know, right? So it's... Um, but but I don't want to downplay when I say that that's not as hot right now. I don't want to downplay what's going on with it because there's some incredible stuff out there. Obviously, Marauders you mentioned. Um, I know that there. I don't know what progress there is right now, but there was a big Vietnam, yeah, uh, Kickstarter that I think finished up. I did. It was, it was one of the, I say this all the time on the show. I can't get everything. <laughs> I can't collect everything. <laughs> but, well, I made up for whatever you bought on that. You didn't buy on that. I bought way too much. <laughs> and <laughs> and so that's the thing coming. is there's still plenty of great modern stuff out there for the audience that is still thirsting for that. Uh, so I, I don't want it to sound like it's it's in any way being underserved. It's just not getting as much buzz and attention right now. But it's definitely there. It's there, and, and there's it's just I think the fan base is is just smaller now because you get a lot of the hardcore guys who don't want to change scales, but a lot of guys have changed to the classified scale. Um, and you know, space is a, you know is a is not a infinite resource, you know, it's, it's, yeah. you got to kind of pick and choose a little bit. And so I get that. Um, but I love that there's so many options. You have the modern scale, you got the O-rings, you got, you know, six inch scale, you got, you know, guys who want to do He-Man with the five and a half and, you know, 12 inch guys still, there's just so much fun stuff out there. Um, you really can pick your poison and, and there's just so many cool toys. And, yeah, yeah. I, I never wanted six inch Joe's. I've said it time and time again, I was never interested in that. Uh, but here we are. Uh, so real quick, before we move on to the Q and a, I just want to mention something. We've talked a lot about toy production, a lot about the different methods there are. And I just want everybody to keep in mind that there are lots of different ways to get toys to market, whether you're a big giant company, uh, or whether you're an independent company who's doing pre-orders and taking money way in advance or working with someone like big bad or, uh, Kickstarter crowdfunding. There's so many different methods and they're all viable. Every company that's out there making toys has to do it. First of all, they're doing it with passion. Nobody's out there making toys because they're like, yeah, we're going to get rich off of this. <laughs> yeah, that's like, not true. <laughs> they're doing it out of love and they have to find the business model that works for them. Uh, and it takes time. And as you were saying, like, if, you, if you're an independent toy company and you're having stuff made at the same factory that Mattel is having WWE Elite 109 made in, guess what? You're, you're going to put on – Yeah, <laughs> you're at the back of the line because that's just how it is, and that's why this stuff takes so much time. So, like, when we're looking at, you know, Mezco, Super 7, Fresh Monkey Fiction, uh, Boss Fight, any of these companies, 
remember like they're doing it because they love it and and they're working as hard if not harder than those big companies are because they love it so let's all try to have a little more understanding of pre-order dates moving around and, and knowing things like chris like you said you get those paint masters back and you're like you know what this isn't good enough for our customer we got to send it back and delay a little bit which we've seen transparency is important because we've seen mm-hmm. the skeletron guys been very open call sign longbow um like so many of these companies are so good about transparency and letting customers know look this is what's going on we're making sure this product is good enough for us to bring to you and yeah. and at the end of the day that's what's important yeah we're fans too you know like we i don't want to i don't want to put all this you know like put out a product that i'm not that i wouldn't want on my shelf i don't want it to be something that's just like eh, it was almost good you yeah know, i want it to yeah. be the best it, it possibly can be it, it, especially it's just it has to be something that somebody really is happy with and and that's how you're going to continue having people buy more toys if you want to make toys you got to make good toys and right and, and that's how whatever figure you're working on right now that you're thinking this is probably going to hit about june of 2026 if that figure is going to happen, you got to put out good product now. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Rachel Salinas jumped in and said the General Mamba Class A uniforms look really sharp. Hopefully, all branches can be represented. Oh, is she is she talking about the General Brown uh, uh, yes, the other yes. day? But I mean, you know, we know about General Mamba and Eagle Force, right. and uh, maybe some other stuff later. But uh, but yeah, General Brown, I'm I'm glad. I, I would love to. I would push for. Um, as much of that too i would like i always like the dress blues uh you know gung-ho um i know they you can't really do the 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 logo anymore um but i'm also a fan of kind of just some sci-fi dress uniforms or you know like goofy different kind of go in your own way a little bit but yeah i would love you know um having you know the navy and the air force and everybody represented and i think it'd be really awesome because it, it, i always thought it was cool to see like if you see a gi joe in full you know dress uniform and, and yeah. it's, it's just kind of fun like well, we know plus, sci-fi spends all of his free time including sleeping true. in his uniform in full, however yeah. i feel like not everybody else does <laughs> to be fair that thing's got to be a pain to take on and off for sci-fi maybe not as bad as deep six i don't know that <laughs> thing maybe. deep six has assistance that's why he's super really, seven that's why super seven made all those sailors they're just there to help deep six get his dive suit <laughs> off uh all right well we've got to move on now into our sound off segment if i can find the banner i've got too many banners now uh, all right, this is a segment where we take input from Audible Interlude Podcast on Instagram and from audiblearmy.com. And this time around, we have got uh, questions and thoughts specifically for Mark and Chris. Starting off with something from audiblearmy.com. Those Dread Troopers are so awesome. I get so many questions about those when people see them. Do you have any other 118th goodness for Joe Fest 2024? Well, we talked a little bit about the possible fo- or about the forthcoming follow up to the Dread Trooper, but uh, anything else coming for Joe Fest? I, I that would be the only one if I can get it in time. But there is some fresh monkey fiction. There is a really fun uh, 118th scale figure that's going to be available that I know will be there in time. Um, the, the paint sample came back for that and Bill had an awesome idea for this and that's going to be fun. I hope, I hope I can have a few of my, uh, you know, VHS style, uh, figures. Um, and if not, I will have at least a prototype there so people can see and play around with it. And it'll just be like, you know, maybe a month or so later. I just want to make sure that one's right. And then there are some more coming after that. I already have the next one paint master practically done. And then, you know, once I send it off, those parts are already tooled. Uh, so it should be a little quicker. Excellent. All right. Well, that was from uh, our pal, Matthew Comstock, who we will see at Joe fest. Uh, next up also from audiblearmy.com. Uh, if you could crowdfund a dream project for one of your lines, what would it be? Hmm. Well, I mean, this is this a dream project? Like, is this something that I have to own the IP for? Or would this be something that you know, like? I would. I think it could be whatever you want. If you have, if you have uh, something in your back pocket, you'd be interested in, or if there's a license you'd like to work with, e- either way. 
me personally, what I would always like the thing I've always wanted would be a like I, I would probably say one twelfth scale now or even one eighteenth scale. It, I would be happy regardless. I know Joy Toy or not Joy Toy who did um, um, Hyatt Toys did a little bit, and then NECA's done it, but. I want some like classified style colonial Marines. Like oh, I'm, I'm a huge aliens fan, pulse yeah. rifles, smart guns. If I can get that, like gridirons done some cool stuff with, you know, just making cool 3d stuff, prints and stuff. But oh, man, I would love, I would love some colonial Marines in some way. I would, because that, that Hyatt toys did the troop carrier. Yeah. The APC. I mm -hmm. put that thing in my cart like three times and was like, <laughs> I cannot do this. I would love some kind, and I would say 118 because I want I want the drop ship and I want the the APC. But I, the whole reason I, oh, I can't yeah, get drop ship. I can't get to it right now. The whole reason I bought the GI Joe Monster Blaster APC is because it's basically a toyed up version yep. of the Aliens carrier. But yeah, yeah, I want I want a couple of vehicles, and I want it manageable. I would like to just put a little diorama table like on one of these. I one eighteenth would be great for Colonial Marines. It would be so good, and and just having it in that way. But yeah, Colonial Marines all day long. You know, you can use any of the any aliens. Neck aliens work. There's one eighteenth aliens. Yeah, that would be my dream project. Mark, uh, is there anything you're you're itchy to get to? It, so this is a hypothetical successful crowdfund for a project. It'd be a battle mech. Oh man, I yes. like my big sloppy robots. So yes, that's where I would go. I would love to see, and again, one eighteenth scale. Like there were so in the nineties, like there were a few lines that sort of tried, and just didn't. Exo Squad. Yes, Exo Squad. Squad. Yeah. My gosh, I mean that's that was a, that's got a big community too. And and I, it's mind blowing to me that there hasn't been some kind of modern revival like we got a couple of mechs from the joe line that were not bad but they were not what we wanted out of battle suits like that um yeah i would love to see like highly detailed well speaking going back to aliens uh neca did the power loader yep i would love to see some like mech suits that detailed yeah yep. and I, I, I think i think even at 112 it's doable, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be awesome. That's yeah, but that that's what I would do. Uh, all right, going out to Audible Interlude podcast. Now we've got a couple that I don't think they quite got that these were questions for Grindstone Toys, but or or for excuse me for Mark II Design and Grindstone Toys, uh, but uh, you guys can still answer this one. Which Joe or Cobra do you believe has the highest kill count? From our pal Pete, I, I actually saw that I saw that uh, that question earlier on the on the on the post, and I was like, "Wait, we already know which Cobra doesn't doesn't yeah, the saw viper Cobra. have the highest uh, kill count? You <laughs> know, mowing 40, down quick yeah. kick and dock and stuff." <laughs> but Joe, I would I would feel Joe would be. Um, let's see. Actually, I take it back real quick on my Cobra. It would have to be. Um, what was his name? Uh, the, the, the Dr. Killshot or as Cobra Commander named him, Trouser Snake. I don't know if you guys have watched any Robot oh. Chicken. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> killed all the fumbles. Yeah. It was always fumbles. Yes, it fumbles. was always fumbles. You're right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Joe, Snake Eyes, I think Snake Eyes definitely had, you know, constantly just... Uh, yeah, yeah. Up, yeah I mean, it depends on which version you're looking at, but if you, I mean, like in Resolute, Snake Eyes kills like 30 troopers <laughs> you're right. on his assault on Cobra Island. <laughs> yeah, he's probably, correct. Snake Eyes is probably taking out just countless, just random Cobra troops just off screen. He, That's he's probably thing, though, killed more think... Cobras in Silent Interlude alone than most of the Joes, like for the yeah. entire run of the comics. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you guys are, are, you're thinking way too linear because everything that happens off screen we know that polly just flies <laughs> around <laughs> dropping poison capsules in people's booze or oh, that time that polly became asleep, gigantic drops, i mean come on it is it is polly through and through <laughs> yeah, just real I, quick I about that. 
about Polly, it made me laugh uh, when Eddie had sent the picture of the Cobra Warlord, the, not the one I posted today, but I think it was a few days ago. Um, if you guys see Polly's laying there dead too, with all the like dead bodies. And I just laughed so hard when I saw that. <laughs> Poor Polly. Uh, from Bob Burke art, will the parts for that amazing Sergeant Slaughter be made available anywhere else? Got to sign up for the class. You know, that's that's the thing. Um, you know, if we have any kits left afterwards, you know, depending on how many we make for the class, because uh, Mark's got to 3D print these and get them all ready, and, um, which isn't super fun doing a ton of kits. So we're going to already have the whole class worth. And if we have any left over, I don't know, but probably not. So I would sign up for the class, but just keep an eye out just in case. Yeah, this is... I go back and forth about how I feel about like limited stuff, but this is something truly special. And part of the experience is, is that it is Joe fest and that it is the class. And like, I, it, this is a case where I appreciate it being, yeah, you, you got to be there and you got to have the experience or, or at least the experience of picking the parts up in person. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, next up from Audible Interlude Podcast on Instagram, Podcast from the Pit. Uh, this one we're going to have to save for later because this is too long and involved and get it to get into right now. But it's an awesome question that honestly we could probably do a whole episode about, uh, about Super 7 O-Rings. But we'll save this one for later on. Uh, and thank you for putting in there, Podcast from the Pit, the weirder the better. Because I'm taking that as a challenge. We we know who they were talking to <laughs> on that. One. Uh, so this has been a great conversation. Uh, I, I love getting knowledge about the toy production process, about the people behind it, what goes into it. Before we wrap things up here, what what's something that you want the fan base to know, or some information that you think? is important to toy collectors or, or people making choices about buying toys. Don't settle. Make sure it's, you know, it, it, toys are expensive. Everything's going up in price, you know, buy what you really like, you know, and, 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 you know, it, it has to be good enough, you know, like really, I, I love the, you know, buy independent, as much as you can, because these guys, like you said before, passionate, they are, you know, all of us, I feel really love the products we make just not just because it's, you know, we don't want to just sell toys. We want to just make toys. We love making toys and, you know, yeah. What do you got, Mark? Just, um, you know, uh, there's a lot to appreciate within the toy community and there's a lot to appreciate within like the toys themselves. I mean, part of what got me to where I am right now was my love of, all things gi joe art related when i was a kid like the the painting on the front of the card like the sculpting like there's so much talent and effort and work that goes into it um just you know uh, uh, appreciate all the other stuff there's a there's a lot of people behind the scenes putting these things out there and um it's all pretty amazing well, guys, that was a fantastic conversation. Uh, tell us where we can find you online. Uh, we'll we'll stick with Mark, actually. Where can we find you online, and what have you got coming up? Um, online, pretty much all social media, at Mark2Design, uh, X. I'm kind of in the same boat as you, Dave, with um, uh, threads. Like, I... what What is it? I'm on there, but, like, Jesus. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, fa you know, Facebook, Instagram, Etsy store. So on Etsy, I sell some STL files of my designs, and I sell 3D prints. Um, so uh, like the Snow Trooper we talked about earlier, like I'll be doing a restock pretty soon, and I'll have um, this guy up on there. Um, and then I've got Patreon, and I have like files I made like a. Like a Whoa! Rabbit. Hang on, we're Yo. zooming back in. Bring that. <laughs> bring, bring, that. <laughs> bring that fella back up. We gotta. <laughs> Sorry. I think my heart just stopped. <laughs> Whoa. Look at that thing. Uh, and he has the leash for Baroness. Yeah, yeah. I left her on the shelf. <sighs> well, I mean, she's no Lady J. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. That's beautiful. Thank you. 
Uh, and Chris, where can we find you online? And, and well, we, we kind of know what you've got coming up, but anything else to plug? Uh, just, uh, yeah, I'm at uh, Grindhouse Toys on, on uh, Instagram. That's really, really uh, the most active. I it usually will post to Facebook as well, but they changed it now where it has to be a different account. So I end up more people really interacting on Instagram. So Instagram is really where you're going to find any of my stuff. Um, but I'm going to be at Joe Fest, of course, working the Fresh Monkey Fiction Big Bad uh, booth. And um, I got some surprise uh, stuff coming uh, a new uh, maybe six inch line that might be being teased i mean not that'll that'll be separate from like the monster force stuff but like i have something that's you know with the the, the dread troopers and stuff like that's one thing for 118th but the new six inch stuff i should have the first figure prototype there for that so keep an eye out for that excellent cool cool uh, all right. Well, we've got one more segment, and uh, I had mentioned that if you guys wanted to stick around for it, you could. Uh, it's called Joe and Tell, sponsored by our pal Slickalicious, who designs a ton uh, of our merchandise. He, he's an excellent graphic designer, and it's a pleasure to be able to work with him. Uh, everybody, please check out Shop Slickalicious on Instagram. So, uh, Chris and Mark, have you got some Joe and Tells, or are we signing off for the night? I, ha- I mean, I've got a lot of toys around here. Yeah. <laughs> it does not have to be Joe. Hmm. Are you, are, are you guys going to be showing some stuff? Yeah, yeah. We, you we guys go something. first, and then I'll see what I want to I'm going to show. I'm going to go first because I want to give everybody a closer look at this oh. <laughs> Multiverse Massacre Dread Trooper. Uh, that again, I picked up at Joe Fest last year. Now this isn't, the packaging is gorgeous, but this is, if you're a fan of customization, well, first of all, you've got to check out the blueprints, the, the weathered blueprints, no less, (laughs) that came with the Dread Trooper that point out all of the accessories. Uh, and this isn't just like. Like, everything here is in this package. Oh, whoops. There we go. And you see that weathering right there? I did not spill coffee on this. This is, uh, unlike other blueprints that I own, uh, this one was not pre-coffeed. Comes in a quality bag for protection. (laughs) And... This is, I mean, you know, you know the style, you know that modern articulation. So this has the full, I guess, super super articulated one eighteenth. I don't know. We yeah. we still need a term. But the range on this, I, I was really amazed at. Uh, it feels better than any of the modern Joe figures I have. What what is that? Is it you were talking about tolerances before? Yeah, it's it, it's just that. So I can't take any credit for any of the, the like the the mold because man, Bill has just killed it with all of his Eagle Force parts because those are all Eagle Force parts that I just got to play around with, and the factory just kills it. And he added thigh cuts, so I was the first figure that actually got to have the thigh cuts. So that gave it all that extra articulation. I love that you can really pose those guys out with their arms, even though it's just a single elbow joint. It's just the sculpting so it's, good. It's got a deep bend on it i mean that's a little more than 90 degrees and then the wrist having that wrist is huge too for just pointing a rifle um and oh man and it just it feels good like even just holding that compared to you know a a 25th or a pursuit of cobra which are great but like they're great but this the the plastic feels solid mm -hmm. um everything moves nicely the joints all work like they're supposed to work I just the quality of it is fantastic and then the accessories I, i've wanted to open this one i've got my loose one is back there on the shelf this one Love it. um but i mean look at that tons of customization there i wish you know in retrospect i should have bought several but that's when you're at joe fest you have to make choices i understand that I understand, uh, but you know, I will maybe have a few that I just held off to bring back to Joe Fest. Not very many. So if you want a Dread Trooper, I may have a few left. So that was my question. They're sold out on the website. Yep. Um, 
So you've got a few, but is there any chance of another run of these or is this one and done? Now, I would like to, you know, depending on that's what the next figure coming out, you know, uh, if he does OK, you know, if people want him and they enjoy him. I want I would love to do another Grip Trooper. He's our you know, he's that multiverse massacre stormtrooper. He's that I, I love something. There's just something about an eagle or I mean, an, an Easter egg colored, you know, villain. <laughs> But I just think it's hilarious, you know. Big fan <laughs> of Create a Cobra. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, right, right. And, and I love that these guys just rip through different dimensions and just, you know, they're just completely evil as hell, you know, and it's just, it's a ton of fun. So, yes. So, definitely uh, keep an eye out for Dread Troopers. Show up early to that Fresh Monkey Fiction booth and maybe snag one if they're there. Uh, and keep an eye uh, for what's coming next. Uh, Christian, you got anything for Joe and Tell? Oh, do I? Oh, <laughs> baby, here we go. Oh, yes. Uh, so, Toy Lanta this oh, year. Right, right. Great, great convention. Uh, got a lot of great stuff. Uh, the last, I think maybe hour that I was there, I walked back. I walked by a booth that had a lot of. Um, like old 12 inch Joe's, but it was, you know, broken body parts, whatever. And, and lying amongst this pile of pieces was a certain naked figure that I was like, Oh man, do I need this naked figure? But I do because I've talked about it way too much on the podcast. So, uh, I held off on showing him until I could get his proper clothes from eBay. But ladies and gentlemen, I have an invader. <laughs> yes. The one joint has popped out, um, but the plastic is really brittle. So yeah. I'm not, uh, I'm undetermined yet if I'm going to try to fix it, but the paint, on him is great his yeah, it looks eyes really are good so, yeah like other than the the shoulder and and the few chips um the price i paid for this is probably like one twelfth of what naked ones on ebay go for so uh yeah this has now we just got to figure out how to work him into classifieds because <laughs> I, there's no doubt in my mind that amazing. if the line lasts that long, we will see it. <laughs> I hope so, anyway. Well, that's I been a long too. time coming. I'm glad you, I'm glad yes. you have finally achieved one of your grails. Uh, all right, Chris or Mark, have you guys got something? I'm going to go grab it real quick. Real okay. Fast, right First of all, I have never seen one of those things in per like in my life. Well, oh I my mean, God. I know what it is, but I've never like with my eyes seen one. <laughs> oh, it's. Should I go while he's? Yeah, yeah. Let's well, I got, I'll be I got bringing this. it to Joe. Oh, what do we got? Oh, oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes, yes. I need it, man. <laughs> yeah. So, what he is holding for uh, for those who are not watching it, AudibleArmy.com, uh, is a cannon for the GI Joe classified vamp. Not only is it the styling of the original vamp cannon, but it has the functionality of the, the barrel bomb, bomb guns. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. A, a bunch of people have made good looking versions, but I haven't seen anyone else doing it work. So, so that's a, that's like one of the files you can buy that file on uh, Etsy. I'm going to sell some of these. Uh, what is it? The 22nd, Monday, the 22nd, I'm doing a restock. I'm a okay. I'll have okay. a handful of these in there. Yeah, that, well, and let me ask you something. For as, as somebody who who designs fantastic three D printed stuff, um, if if I don't have a three D printer, and it's something that you're not physically selling, how would somebody go about, you know, getting the file and then finding someone to print it for them? Yeah, just um, I get the question a lot, uh, and I've gone through a couple of different people that want to print thing like have a collaboration and, and print stuff and uh quite frankly i've gotten burned uh, yeah just about would, every damn time i would imagine that's like yeah, and 3d printing's a little bit of the wild west still yeah um there's people that don't believe they should ever have to pay for a design 
Um, there's people that charge way too much. There's people that charge way too little. It's it's kind of all over the place. Um, my answer would be buy yourself a 3D printer yeah. and learn or make a friend. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they, can, you know, like I put stuff up. Uh, there's a site called Thingiverse where you can put files up and they're free. Like people can just download it. I put some stuff up on there. Um, some stuff I sell on Etsy. Some stuff I only make available to to Patreon. Um, part of part of the answer to that question is, what are the wishes of the artist that created it? Yeah. Um, are they, you know, if they want five bucks or something, that's not bad. You know, um, if you're only willing to download free stuff, that's okay. But um, you know, if the artist says uh, for personal use only, you know, you shouldn't buy their file for five bucks and then turn around and sell it on some other website for 10. Oh no, you shouldn't, absolutely not. Shouldn't make a bunch of prints and start selling them at shows. Yeah. 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 You know, like um, my personal philosophy, if I put it up on Thingiverse and it's free, I have no control over that whatsoever. Go, go crazy. I don't care. Sell it, whatever. I have no control and I'm not going to invest myself in that. But if it's on Etsy or Patreon, like you shouldn't turn around and profiteer off of my work. Uh, yeah. And that's, you know, but that's something I hadn't even really thought about is that's got to be a, a cute, well, as much a problem as it is with any kind of IP design mm -hmm. type stuff. And that's part of the debate too, right? Like, uh, so this, do I, do I own this design? Well, no. Yes. No. See how I look at stuff like that is, well, Hasbro didn't do it. You know, if Hasbro well, had done it, maybe I'd feel differently, but Hasbro didn't do it. They could have, and they yeah. chose not to. It's, I don't know. But what, you mentioned the Patreon. Plug the Patreon while you're here. I have a Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Patreon. Mark, mark your design. Um, I, the goal when I started it, uh, I wasn't even doing G.I. Joe stuff. I was doing uh, Battletech stuff. I know somebody put that in the chat when I mentioned Big Mechs, but I was... I was doing big snobby robots <laughs> and then um gi joe kind of really took off and so it kind of that's the direction it went yeah um but i really hope to have like one good size project to put up like once a month that was that's that's my goal i i rarely hit it so i i do some smaller stuff and then a big thing when i can well as, as uh as, as folks who have a patreon we hope that everybody understands like this this is the way to support people who are doing anything uh, that uh, that need to keep going and that need funds, whether it's to pay for hosting, whether it's to pay for d time to design, whatever the case may be, uh, you know, that kind of crowdfunding, it's, it's legitimate and it's in the world we're in now. In a lot of cases, it's the only option you got. So everybody get out there and support, support the artists you love. Uh, all right, Noel. All right. What do you got for us? This is actually something I wanted to bring out on uh, our last live stream, but since we decided to talk we about the figures. We yeah, pivoted. we did a little pivot, so uh, I, I've been dying to open this up. Um, so as as I mention every week, I am a member of the finest oh, costuming the new club. Okay. So this was a little, um, a little mail call we got. Now, I, I ordered some pens. That's what I know is in here. But right. as always, there's always some good stuff that comes along with it whenever we do one of these little runs. So this is, uh, you know, being a member of the club, we get to order some stuff internally. So I'm going to pull this out and find out what kind of cool stuff we have this I, time. I got to tell you, I'm just a fan of the fancy printed envelope. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the envelope is great. This is another thing that um, our current uh, our current merch officer does is he, you know, he prints up these very nice little uh, nice. These nice little things. The, um, sometimes it's they look just it's like a memo. the ones that they. Yeah, That's they a, used that to put is a out. military style memo. Courier yep. new twelve point and everything. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and they, in the past, they've been just like the ones that came out with GI Joe merch. Yeah. So, and the, this one's a little bit more legitimate looking. We got another, another patch here. So this one actually would have probably look nicer on this hat because the finest pops a little bit more than that one does. Yeah, you, you need to put the one on that hat on like a white hat. I don't know yeah, that. yeah. Um, oh, and this is our, our uh, charity here. Oh, nice. Canines for Warriors, so sticker for that. Uh, this is something that I wasn't aware 
So the actual thing I ordered were these two enamel pins. And I ordered several of these. Oh, um, I like seeing the eagle. We don't yes. see the eagle enough. We got the eagle and we got the regular Cobra uh, finest symbol. But this was the surprise. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. We got the new Arashikage uh, design there. Um, so, yeah. And then I've got uh, another Vote Cobra. <laughs> little sticker they threw in. So, yeah. Um, said so the only things that I, sh that, that's everything that's in this, but the only things that I knew that I was going to get were these two things right here. So, um, very cool. A lot of nice. cool stuff they threw in there with that as well. And unfortunately, I got spoiled because I got to see a lot of other people's, uh, you know, posting like oh, their, yeah, yeah, of their loot and the, uh, and the, and the socials, but, um, but yeah, people get so like the because there's there's a pro wrestling crate every month, and I mm -hmm. get to witness the backlash of the person who <laughs> posts it too early. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> All right, Chris, no pressure here, but you are the main event of Joe and Tell. Well, I couldn't help myself, and I haven't shown this to anybody. It's not the best paint sample yet, but you're gonna have to see the next multiverse massacre. Oh, so, he. He's pretty fun, but he's missed. And it's funny that, you know, how Mark really just set me up for failure here as I show you this, because you guys are going to be like, that's this guy. <laughs> no, but, I know what this is. <laughs> but here we are with a little bit of... Oh, no! Oh, man! Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see 100% what it is. <laughs> it's it's Damien Priest's entrance gear. Exactly. From, uh... <laughs> yes, yes. We're getting an ultimate of that, too. But that's no, that. I know, right? Uh, um, real, actually, real quick. You met, okay, you mentioned the ultimates. Have you have you seen the new Piper and Bret Hart ultimates yet? I can't find them. I keep they're using fun. They're using softer plastic in the butterfly joints. Okay. And it, it's... It works a lot better. Anyway, I'm, uh, sorry. I'm excited. No, you're okay. I'm, you want to talk wrestling figures? I'll do that too. <laughs> um, yeah, so my biggest problem probably is the, the cape's not exactly, uh, and this kind of goes into what we were talking about earlier. If it's not exactly what we want, you know, we got to wait a little longer. Um, I want the wire. It's got a wire. I love yeah. wired soft goods. If you're going to have soft goods, you know, do them right. Don't just have, <sighs> drives me crazy when stuff comes out and it's just like a piece you of cloth. You've got to be able, if especially if there's a hood, mm -hmm. you got to be able to do something with it. Uh, it's, 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 it, and that's why you know I wanted this to be able to. You got to get that menacing look. Um, yeah. This is necromancer. You know, very different. Yes, yes, <laughs> of course. Multiverse massacre is supposed to be a whole thing of, you know, you think of like the 1980s. You know, like the Terminator comes out and then Cyborg or you know different. Just, right offshoot kind of goofy you know like Roger hey let's Corman. jump on that and, and it's just all toys mixed together uh different universes all that fun stuff um his sidearm is pretty fun i don't know if you guys could pick up on that what uh, the color uh, scheme right there um let me see the colors is the, is that a zapper yes <laughs> oh man that's I mean, funny no, not at no, all no it's definitely not it's, it's a blaster yes exactly. it's a blaster it's Gosh. a blaster. Um, the head, you know, all this stuff will come off, of course. As um, soon as you said translucent, I was like, oh, my gosh. And then you said glow in the dark. And I was like, I can't handle all of this. <laughs> yeah, I, you, I'm like, a sucker for that stuff. <laughs> it's the holy trinity of what we all want in our toys. Yeah, right. And if you can what, somehow work some vac metal in as well. Right. Just that's gonna be the third. Hair. Don't you worry. That's going to be later. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> and, this, and it's hard to see probably on camera, but the, the purple is very reflective. It's very, like, shiny. Which it I'm looks really, metallic. It looks it. It is. Yeah. And he's gonna. he actually has some shoulder pieces I forgot to grab real quick that are going to go up here, too, um, that are in that same color. Uh, but, yeah, the, the, the head is clear, and then the face is where the paint is. But it's not as good as I wanted it to be, so I like 20 pages of notes. I'm like, do this, 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 this. Um, to the factory. He also has an AK-47 because, you know, sometimes his powers uh, <laughs> it don't work, and I feel like, let's have a re reliable uh, rifle. Um, he's going to have regular gloved hands, uh, the clear translucent ones, these energy effects, because what he has is he has powers that are um, they're, they're practically death incarnate. You know, if he touches you, he has these blades. He's going to have a ton of blades that are clear with that same oh. dry brushing. Um, and he they just manifest um and he can only use that power for so long because if not it'll it'll kill him and, and that power now will transfer to the next person um 
And so, yeah, he's going to be pretty fun. I'm excited to have him out. I, I hope I can have a few by, by Joe Fest. If not, I'll have some packaging samples. And, again, this is the one that's going to have the Mark Pennington art, which is it's so killer. I'm so Oh, excited my gosh. That, well, seeing it now, I can only imagine. So, oh, um, my I, gosh. That's that's the next one. Well, and I love the 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 thought and the world building, or I guess multiverse building, that's going into this. Because it's, that's that's important. That's one of the things that's making Monster Force special is it's not just here are some soldier monsters. There's a world. There's a story to be told. And that's you, that's important stuff, too. You, you got to have that story. Figured out an intelligent way to get the bad boy in there. I mean, <laughs> when we saw that one, we were like, this goes beyond just... Here's, I mean, we all love our classic monsters, but this goes beyond what we have seen people do before. Uh, New York Knight 1974 says, if Mark II Designs puts out 112th scale behemoth, I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> Wotaj says, necromancer, not neck romancer. Well, you don't know, pal. Yeah, you don't know hey. what you're <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, we have had an awesome time tonight. Thank you, everybody that's been hanging out in the chat. Uh, Chris and Mark, thank you guys so much for stopping by. It's, it's been awesome having you here. I appreciate you hanging out for the Joe and Tell segment and all the information we've gotten. Uh, the more we can learn about the toys and the people that make them, the better off we all are as a community, I think. Uh, Noel, you're... It's, excuse me. Noel, you talked a little bit about The Finest. Uh, where can we find The Finest online or in person? The finest cc.com, and uh, there will be uh, a finest booth at Joe Fest. So if you're coming to Joe Fest, you can uh, find us there. Uh, and Mark, one more time, where can we find you online? At Mark you Design on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Patreon, YouTube, uh, you know, everywhere, yeah. all over. Uh, Christian, where do we find that toy photography that you do so well? You can find me on Instagram under the name Legion Cub. Uh, and Chris, where can we find Grindhouse Toys online? Instagram at Grindhouse Toys and GrindhouseToys.com. It's there's nothing for sale right now, but you can at least look at the fun Toys R Us style ad, and uh, you never know, I might change it up pretty soon and put some new stuff up on there. Oh man, once you see that splash page when it opens up, you're just going to visit it every once in a while just to take it in. Uh, this has been an awesome conversation. Everybody that participated, thank you so much. If you're listening right now, remember, uh, follow us, leave us a review, five stars, and the funnier or weirder the review is, the more likely we are to read it here on the air. Uh, there's nothing I like more than sitting down with a bunch of cool people and talking about toys and talking about G.I. Joe. Until next time, yo, Joe. Oh.